Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I've just finished attending a demonstration and briefing by Panasonic engineers on their upcoming Panasonic UB9000 flagship 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray player that will support HDR10+, and also Dolby Vision Dynamic Metadata formats. It is going to be arriving in October at a retail price at around £900. And I'm just going to rattle through some basic specifications before I forget because I still need to catch a train back to Manchester from London and uh, UB9000 is going to be able to support 3D playback for those of you who still care about this format and it will have the company's new HCX processor and the strength of it is its chroma upsampling. As you probably know, 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray discs, they're mastered at 10 bit 420 but before the picture is being output on screen, it needs to be converted to 444 and eventually RGB. And from my analysis of the Panasonic UB900 before, Panasonic's Chroma Up Sampling is probably the best on the market. It uses a multi-tap process to try and upsample from 420 to 444, resulting in sharper and cleaner chroma detail. And the UB9000 will have obviously all these features, and I expect it to surpass the Oppo players as sad as it is that they have actually gone out of market but during this briefing what Panasonic has been stressing is its HDR optimizer function now this is a fairly novel feature that attempts to replace the tone mapping function on your TV they will actually perform the tone mapping on the player so let's say if you feed the player uh, static metadata content that has a uh, say max CLL or MDL or mastering display luminance of 2000 nits what the player can do with the HDR optimizer function is to tone map it to 1000 nit metadata and then send the 1000 nit metadata to the television so that the television will need to do very minimal tone mapping and this is very beneficial let's say in the case of projectors in the case of very low luminance televisions let's say sub 500 nits or even let's say for content that is mastered to 4000 nits or even 10,000 nits you can ask the UB9000 to actually tone map it down to 1000 nits, 500 nits or 1500 nits and send these relevant metadata to the television. Let me just go through the HDR optimizer function. So it can actually be switched off. You can actually switch it off totally for either static HDR10 content for HLG and let's say if you play a Dolby Vision content on a Dolby Vision capable television, HDR optimizer will automatically be disabled because there's no need for it. There's dynamic metadata in the source already. And the same applies to HDR10 Plus, which is the open standard format that is actually supported by Panasonic, by 20th Century Fox, by Warner Brothers, and also by Samsung. And if you feed Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus, you won't need the HDR optimizer function. The engineers have made sure that the HDR optimizer function will be disabled when you feed a native dynamic metadata source to a dynamic metadata compatible display. Now, the interesting thing happens when you actually feed static metadata. Let's say if you actually play a Dolby Vision disc on this UB9000, but your TV is not Dolby Vision capable. So what the player will be doing is by default using the base HDR10 layer. And this is where HDR optimizer can actually come in helpful. Let's say the Dolby Vision disc is mastered to 4000 nits and your TV is only capable of 1000 nits. What you want the UB9000 to do is to actually tone map to 1000 nits and then send the metadata out to the TV as 1000 nits so that your TV doesn't need to do much work at all. And the UB9000 will be using the max CLL which is a uh, maximum content light level, and also the MDL, uh, mastering display luminance metadata to actually generate the tone curve and from the demonstration certainly it looked very impressive it actually retained the specular highlight detail much better and also accuracy in the brighter parts of the picture now if you 
choose to turn on HDR optimizer, there are actually four settings here. There's OLED, and then there's super high luminance LCD. I mean, super high. I don't know where they get the idea. Maybe in LG Super UHD or Samsung's SUHD televisions. But there's super high luminance LCD, and then there's middle or high luminance LCD, and then the bottom most setting is low luminance LCD or projector. Now, if you actually select low luminance LCD or projector, it will actually tone map any content down to 500 nits and then send out the metadata as 500 nits. If you select middle or high luminance level LCD, it will tone map it to 1000 nits and this is the default setting. If you select OLED, we've been informed that it actually applies a 1000 nit kind of a metadata to the output as well. And if you select super high luminance LCD, then it will actually tone map it down to 1,500 nits. So you basically get three levels. You get 500 nits, you get 1,000 nits, which is the default, and you get 1,500 nits. Interestingly, there's a specific OLED function at the top, and I think it is because Panasonic engineers and all of you who actually watch this channel will probably know the maximum peak luminance of OLED is around 800 nits over the past couple of years and there's really no need to try and design another tone curve for different mix of say consumer WRGB OLEDs so they put the option OLED there just to make things easier for consumers to select. In the demonstration what the Panasonic engineers did was to display a bright scene from Pan where there's a sun which is close to 4000 nits in the background and then the surrounding clouds they are meant to be orange but on the OLED on which this Panasonic UB9000 was demonstrated. Now this is the EZ1002 rather than this year's FZ950 or 800, so it is last year's OLED. But what the Panasonic OLED, as good as it is, was doing was to actually clip out some of the bright detail on the sun and also the cloud turned yellow because of the white subpixel dilution of consumer WRGB OLEDs. But once you actually turn on HDR optimizer on the UB9000, Obviously, it will darken the picture somewhat on this particular bright scene so that specular highlight detail is retained. But more importantly, the surrounding clouds regain their orange hue. So maybe this is a way for OLED owners out there to enjoy higher saturation rather than letting the white subpixel do the dilution and all the saturated colors get blown out. And another important feature that Panasonic has stressed with its HDR optimizer function is that it operates in 32-bit precision. So if you look at this ramp here that goes from 0 nits to 10,000 nits, if you actually turn on HDR optimizer, the darker parts of the picture still maintains its gradation. It doesn't actually display more posterization or more noise or become more dirty or more pixelated. It still maintains the very smooth gradation. And this is the beautiful thing that Panasonic engineers have done here. They are basically converting the input YCBCR to RGB, applying PQ, linear, doing its tone mapping thing, converting it back to PQ and then applying RGB and then back to YCBCR output and the whole process here is done using 32-bit precision to give that sort of headroom to prevent any noise or video processing errors from creeping in and certainly from the brief demonstration I saw, I saw the retention of smooth gradation on the UB9000 fed to a Panasonic EZ1002. And what other things can I tell you about the UB9000 and another key feature is clearly its audio capabilities but I have to admit that I'm not that clued up about audio acronyms so I can't really rattle it off like I can rattle off say HDR10+, Dolby Vision and things like that but it sounded good you know they demonstrated it on Technics speakers and it sounded superb and it just makes me wish that maybe I need to actually spend some time investing in a good audio setup. But the important thing for audiophile viewers out there is that unfortunately the Panasonic UB9000 doesn't support 
SACD or DVD audio and it is due to a limitation of a chipset and there's no way to add it by firmware upgrade. But the Japanese brand is listening to users out there and they are considering adding support for these audio formats in future products but it will definitely not come on this Panasonic UB9000. And with the demise of Oppo after the company pool is 203 and 205 players, then I think audio files are running out of universal displayer on which to play their music. But yes, this is the Panasonic UB9000 and it is extremely impressive. If you can't you know, afford to spend £900 on this player with its superior deck, superior analog output with dual layer chassis with vibration reducing mechanisms, then the UB820 will have a lot of the features of the UB9000 as well, including the HDR optimizer, which I think will be very helpful to help out televisions that doesn't have the necessary peak brightness. And the UB820 will also support HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision formats. Now, one interesting thing about the Dolby Vision format, when I asked the engineers whether the UB9000 will ship with Dolby Vision out of the box when they actually start selling them in October, they said that it all actually depends on Dolby certification, as you can probably imagine by now. But they actually have a Dolby Vision firmware, prototype firmware that is running on the UB9000, which has not been certified by Dolby Labs yet. And apparently, this Dolby Vision firmware, again, this you have to take Panasonic's engineer's word for it, works on the Sony Dolby Vision capable televisions such as the Z9 or Z90, such as the XE93, XF90, the XE94, and also the AF8. So there's a prototype Dolby Vision firmware on Panasonic UB9000 player that actually works over HDMI on these Sony X1 Extreme televisions. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.